Welcome back to Witness. Manda Chisanga is spending the prize he won as top tourist guide on trying to introduce solar ovens to his local village in Zambia. So far, it's proving an uphill struggle, but will the local chief be able to persuade the skeptical locals to give them a try? This is the home of His Royal Highness uh, uh, Chief Kakumbi, who is a traditional leader of the natives here, the Kunda people in South Rwanda. Whenever you bring something to an, a, a, an area like this one, you've got to, to see the traditional leaders first, and we're here to see him and introduce the solar power project. Then, Manda Chisanga, I'm from Agumunzi, I'm from the Kupuelaji. I was from Tandalirani, Kuno. Could you teach to introduce the uh, project Yama Sola Kukazena and Yamba Munzi? We visited the chief and uh, greeted him in the traditional way. I explained how the solar cooker works and uh, that we were going to present uh, um, one of them, the solar cookers, to him for him to use uh, and his family, and he was very, very happy. I have welcomed the solar cooker, which are coming here for demonstration and possibly for, uh, for giving out to people so that they will do rather minimize going in the bush to cut the trees for firewood. People will still uh, need firewood and they'll need trees for building, but at least during the day, people can have as much cooking energy as, as they like. If you can come close and have a look, you see that the oil now is warming up. <laughs> it's not warming up. And it's coming very, very hot. I don't know. Uh, as if it, you are using electricity. As if we're using it's, electricity. It's the same. Yeah, the it's same exactly. Thing. Yes. And yes. all we're using are just the sun rays. Uh -huh. And the sun rays are reflecting the heat into the middle section there, okay. warming the oil for us. This is a wonderful thing. It will help us because many people are cutting down trees all the time and it will help us protect the trees. If we don't need firewood to cook, it will help us preserve the trees so our children will have these trees in the future. trying to do is to get the ship, the round ship, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So then it can guide us uh, when we start tying around the ring. Five solar cookers that have arrived, and of course one of them has already been donated to the chief. Three of them are in Fualu village. One solar cooker is be being used by four families, and then the other one has been uh, donated to a, to a, a community-based uh, centre. <laughs> What we need to do now is join this and this and this and this. The reaction is, uh, is, is mixed. Some people are really looking forward to having them, and others are not are totally not interested at all. And the, the, the main problem that I've noticed is poverty. Because when you are hungry, you don't care. And, and worse still, somebody gives you uh, uh, an item which can help you cook the food, 
using free energy from up there. And, and if you've got no food, then what are you going to cook uh, on that thing, on the solar cooker? There's nothing. Yeah, so it's a big problem. Culturally, I mean, something like that to any person, I mean, especially in the villages where we live here, this is a very, very remote area, will appear strange. It's a round dish to start with, and then you put food on, on it. There's a uh, wire thing, so you put your pot there, it reflects light on that central point to cook the food. Mm -hmm. And it was immediately, uh, there was that skepticism. Um, how does it work? Uh, it, it looks like there's uh, magic behind it. There's, uh, um, maybe satanic there we go and um, some of them were actually saying that well but how where is the smoke because i mean most of the people want food that has that flavor a, a smoky flavor and, and that's tradition i'm telling you mommy you see it will bake you can bake it good in it sure mommy uh, how would you say people are finding their soda cookers what they're telling me is that it's going to save them time they're telling me that the solar cookers will reduce risks, animal, you know, human conflicts. Okay. They're so happy that this thing has come because it's going to really, really help them a lot here. So it will be easier to maintain a constant fire with supply and not as demanding on their time and their energy. Precisely. Yeah. Mm. And on, on the trees and the resources available. Oh, yeah. So deforestation will be reduced. <laughs> I'm eating rice. Is it good? It's good. <laughs> nice. Very nice rice. The problem is that one solar cooker is not enough to share between many families. How can you all cook at once? When the sun shines, we will use these solar cookers and it will make life much easier because we won't have to go near the elephants. When these women go out to collect firewood in the villages, they leave young girls to look after the children so most of them miss out on education they don't then go to school so with the introduction of solar cookers that will really really change this it's very interesting when i just came i rushed around all the three cookers and interestingly i've noticed that beans is what they're actually cooking on the on the cookers and that is very interesting you know why because beans takes much longer to cook and therefore, you need a lot of firewood for it to, to actually cook. Right. Solar cookers have not really been widely adopted in Africa because there have not really been a great deal of um, efforts and projects to really sensitize people. So most people in Africa have never seen a solar cooker. There is very little government support. In fact, there's no support uh, in any of the countries. Um, and that has, doesn't help with the introduction when you're the people we're trying to get to are generally the poorest people who are out collecting firewood. And so a really high quality solar cooker needs to be subsidized or needs to be paid for for them. Also predominantly the solar cooker projects have been run by people outside of Africa who generally arrive with their own idea and their own program in mind, which doesn't necessarily fit with the local situation. And if it's not if the project is not able to be flexible and cannot meet the demands of the people, it will not work. Chief Kakumbi was telling the, the women uh, all about the importance of having the solar cookers, the, the, the difficulties that they go through, and uh, how it would lessen uh, all these difficulties. <coughs> These things have come so that you don't have to gather firewood. This thing does not need electricity. It needs the sun. When you finish using the cooker, clean it and turn it over. He emphasized that they had to take care of them, clean them nicely, and make sure that they don't get lost. Um, and he, he is going to be also making sure that he monitors the use of these things so that they are not uh, wasted. First and foremost, I think it's going to work. 
I believe in that because uh, that is the only way something can work. You've got to really, really work and believe in it. It will help um, if, if more and more people come forward to help and donate these solar cookers. Then, then it will stop deforestation, it will reduce the risks that women uh, face in the villages, it will reduce uh, smoke inhalation which comes to poisoning, uh, it, will, it will just improve the lives of many, many people. And it's not um, easy, it's not, it's not going to be now, but it, it will definitely take a long time. But the, what I'm happy with is that, that at least there is a start, at least we have started the project. <laughs> a fascinating glimpse of a small scale project that could have enormous implications. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time on Witness.